Hey, a couple of weeks ago, I was out on a driving range hitting golf balls, and I look over and see a high school kid doing the exact same thing. Only he's using just one arm, and he is crushing the golf ball. This is Jason Hill, a driven young man with an amazing story. Jason was a typical kid. He loved Cub Scouts, long division, and rough housing with his two younger brothers. He also loved sports, especially baseball. My family, my friends, a lot of people, you know, saw me as being a, a, a future baseball player. As a nine-year-old, he played in a 12-year-old league, batting 850 with seven home runs. Jason's future in the game looked very bright. But on August 19, 1987, Jason's life would be changed forever. On his way to post signs for his neighbor's missing dog, Jason was hit by a pickup truck charging at over 50 miles an hour. When Jason's mother, Julie Hill, showed up at the hospital, she quickly sought her son's doctor. Happy birthday. The doctor told her Jason would be lucky to live through the night. The left side of Jason's skull had been crushed by the impact of the truck. To save his life, surgeons had to remove a large part of his skull along with a portion of brain tissue. This would leave the right side of Jason's body completely paralyzed. You gotta drink that whole cup. Two weeks later, after waking from an induced coma, Jason had to relearn even the most basic activities. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Speaking, eating, and dressing were suddenly difficult tasks as if he were a newborn child. Yeah, we're, all going, we're all going to another room. We're all going to another room. Yes, it's okay. Yeah, we're all going to another room. Lift up your arm, Jason. Lift up your right arm. At times, doctors and therapists were pessimistic about what Jason could accomplish. But this only pushed him to try harder. Hey! <laughs> They really couldn't figure out, you know, what to do exactly to get me to walk when I was there in the hospital. And they pretty much, you know, gave me the okay to go home because they realized I couldn't do a whole lot more. On returning home from the hospital, Jason would not settle for using a wheelchair. He was determined to walk through his front door, and he did. Welcome home, Jason. Over the next two and a half years, he went through the painful struggle of physical therapy. As Jason's recovery progressed, he quickly returned to sports. Against his doctor's wishes, he signed up for league soccer. Next was baseball, his first love. Following his hero, Jim Abbott, who was born without a right hand, Jason became a starting pitcher for a minor league team. He would later have the opportunity to meet Abbott. Nice, nice to meet you. How you doing? Fine. Want to be a baseball player? Yeah. Talk you out of it? <laughs> <laughs> you want to do the running you just did? <laughs> when I first met him, the greatest thing about it was that I was able to shake sh shake uh, his hand, left handed and left handed. Everybody else, I come up and shake hands. They always give me the right hand, and I have to shake hands a little different. But he was left handed, and he knew my situation, so we just shook hands. Realizing that I had to adjust, Jim Abbott was probably one of the biggest role models as far as sports. For progressively over three years, a constant improvement and um, 
they voted unanimously that this person should get the Most Improved Student Award, and that is Jason Hill. As Jason continued to progress, tragedy would once again enter his life. On January 18, 1995, Jason's childhood friend, Jason Armstrong, was killed in a car accident. He was hit by a moving truck not less than a mile from where Jason had been run over eight years earlier. The similarities between the accidents were striking and Jason was crushed by the loss of his best friend. But in the end, this trial only reinforced Jason's belief that his survival had a purpose. That same year, Jason returned to golf, an addiction going back to childhood when his great-grandfather first introduced him to the links. During his junior year of high school, he made a bold move by trying out for the Orange Glen golf team. I came up to the golf coach, that golf coach said, hey Jason, you know, golf isn't your sport, you know, uh, you need to find another sport to play. And those were his words. Well, luckily that coach uh, transferred to another high school and I just decided to go ahead and just keep on practicing um, and just go ahead and find out where the tryouts were and just show up. I went ahead and I made the team and then a couple weeks later we had our first little practice round and it was against that old coach. I went ahead and shot the lowest score. That golf coach came right up to me after we were all done when we were about ready to get on our bus. He came up to me and says, hey Jason, good job. And I says, hey coach. You know, you need to find another sport to coach. Golf, golf isn't your, your sport. Not only did he make the team, but he also shot in the mid-70s and was driving the ball over 280 yards. Jason has continued his passion for golf. In the spring of 2004, he was busy teaching golf clinics with the likes of Johnny Miller, Ken Venturi, and Eddie Mirrens. At the end of one clinic, Venturi emotionally paid tribute to Jason, citing his three Ds, desire, determination, and dedication, to aptly describe Jason's courage. It's not what you take, Venturi said, but what you give back, what you leave behind. It's a great reward to be remembered. This whole life is, is based upon obstacles. And if you go ahead and give up on them, you really haven't had the chance to show yourself that you can do it. Throughout his life, Jason has faced many obstacles. they've never stopped him. Rather, they were challenges that have been overcome through a life of courage and persistence. His story is truly inspiring. <laughs>